Guys, coming at you here today with an Implast tier list for this week, which is Tyrannical, Bursting, Volcanic, and Tormented. I'm just going to be putting the dungeons in order from easiest to uh, hardest, and we're just going to kind of go from there. Um, I will say, this week specifically, very, very easy uh, week for us, and I'm honestly just going to be going mostly based on this. However, I'm going to have a little twist because I have some personal opinions on this. Uh, but to start off, obviously the Necrotic Wake has a 92.1% success rate. Um, and just so you guys know, this is only on runs over a 15. So a uh, very, very, very good week to run the Necrotic Wake. Easily an S tier. And not far behind it is Sanguine Depths with a 90% success rate. So both of these are easily in the S tier for me. Um... It's so easy to deal with Volcanic, even in the tight corridors of Sanguine Depths. It's, it's just really, really doable. Um, bursting is not that bad, uh, especially with a competent healer. You can, you, know, you can clear the stacks pretty easily. Um, it, it's really not that big of a deal. And both of these dungeons, uh, you know, it's just very... Uh, Necrotic Lake has, you know, it doesn't have as many adds as one might think. Like, it has a couple good packs, but like... It's just not something where bursting is constantly hitting you for massive damage all the time. Unlike Theater of Pain, where we have a 58.4% success rate, I think this one, um, I think this one's actually pretty easy. Personally, I got uh, Keystone Hero this week with the timing of plus 20 um, for this. I didn't think it was that bad, uh, but it depends on your comp. But I think this one is definitely a little bit harder. Um, but I'm not going to put it, I'm not even going to put it in the C tier. I think this is very doable. You know what? Hmm, debatable, debatable. Uh, BC, we'll see how the rest pan out. This could be moved, interchangeable. We're going to leave in C for now, but uh, we're just going to go with this one, I think, is a little bit more painful. Yes, it does have a higher success rate with a 70%. However, bursting on this one can be a real problem, especially in the, uh, the Arden Wild version of the zone. Um, so for that reason, I'm actually going to put in this order i think the other side is worse than theater of pain i don't think the success rate is completely accurate um i think it's accurate it's good but it's not super telling i i think typically both of these dungeons have a lot of problems uh with bursting where it can be a bit very difficult um but i think the other side's a little bit more difficult now miss i actually would say is an s tier dungeon this week I don't know why the success rate is so low. Maybe it's just a little skewed. Maybe, um, I really can't even think of what it is. Maybe people aren't doing the skip, the tree skip, but I think this is an easily timed dungeon. Um, I won't put it all the way in S tier, but I think miss is completely doable. Uh, you know, if you have an experienced group, especially if you're shrouding past the trees or using your input, this bot, just skip that first pack guys, just skip it. That is where 90% of teams wipe because they can't get through the tree. Uh, it's just doing a lot right now. And, and if you can just skip that pack and make up for it by pulling things from the maze uh, or killing extra things at the end, whenever you can go past the boss to the right and kill all those gormlings over there. Uh, I think this is very, very easy to do right now as it is. Um, so I, that, that's an A tier for me, even if it is on the lower uh, third or lower part of the success rate rankings. Um, however, let's go to Spires. I don't think Spires is easier than Mists, or the same as Mists. I think Spires is a little bit harder, and that's specifically because it's tyrannical, and you have some really, uh, it, it just takes a long time to get through specifically the Goliath at the end, I forget his name, the big giant metal dude. And also, even though they've nerfed the fight, the girl who uh, spits all of the shining or, or the black orbs around at her, uh, whenever she does her shining radiance ability, that girl on Tyrannical is a little bit difficult, especially if people are getting hit by the balls, and it can be chaotic at times. And the combination with the long fight of the Goliath, even though it's not a hard fight, it's a long fight, which can really hurt the timer. So for that reason, I don't think Spires is worse than the other side, or even even. I think it's better than the other side, but I don't think it's as easy as Mists. And moving on, where do we have Plague Fall at? I knew this would be a top one, but it's it's such an easy dungeon this week with the right team. I would easily say this is... Okay, I'm, I'm going to put it this way. My S tiers, if you're going for like Keystone Master or Keystone Hero, these are the ones that you want to make sure you get done this week. 
because you can easily time them, you can get them done, and with a competent team, you will find success here. And I would say the same for my A tier, but slightly less. S is like, if I'm going into this dungeon, we're going to time this dungeon most likely. And A for me is if we're we're, we're going in this dungeon, we're we're definitely we're most definitely going to time it. But there's always a chance that something happens, right? Like we either get hit by the trees and missed, or in Plaguefall we don't CC the slimes, right? Like that first fight in Plaguefall is telling. If you can't get through that first fight, you're not going to be able to get through the last fight. And that, to me, is uh, a very obvious sign. Plaguefall can be a little bit difficult, just because Globrog or... Well, I forget his name. I forget the dungeon boss names. But you all know the giant green slime at the beginning. Uh, you got to CC his slime so they don't heal him. Plaguefall can be brutal and tyrannical for that reason. But last and not least, we have Halls of Atonement. Now, this week, they actually buff the halls of atonement timer by a minute so you have an extra minute to complete it and they also nerf the second dungeon uh boss but the nerf to the boss was very minimal like almost doesn't matter it does slightly like but it's almost kind of irrelevant so i would say that's not really a big deal but the extra minute is huge the this dungeon was always closed for a lot of people and an extra minute to complete the dungeon is very very nice However, it, it, the first pool, most tanks like to do the six-pack pool and lust there. And I've just I've seen a lot of tanks struggling this week with that pool specifically. And it wipes a lot of teams, and teams get tilted and someone leaves. Um, I don't think it's unkillable by any means. I think it's very easy to time uh, if you get through that first pool. Most of the rest of the dungeon is pretty easy. Um, but that first pool wipes a lot of, more teams than I think I've seen wipe on almost anywhere else in Shadowlands. But the question is, where should this go? It's definitely not an A tier for me. It's not a C tier, which leaves, well, I guess we have our answer. We have B tier. I would say this is a pretty good order. Um, left to right, easiest to hardest, in my opinion, starting Necrotic Wake and then Sanguine Depths number two. Miss Eternal Scythe number three, Plague Fall number four, Theater of Pain number five, Spires of Ascension number six, Halls of Atonement number 7, and last, and please avoid this dungeon. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. But if you're going to avoid a dungeon, it'd probably be the other side. Anyways, uh, let me guys know what you think um, for this tier list. Uh, let me know if I got it right, if I got it wrong. I mean, it's not quite going with the statistics on the success rate. But this is my personal opinion on how I think dungeons are working out this week um, for most people. Anyways, let me guys know what you think in the comments, and as always, please have a wonderful day. Peace out.